Researchers working at the Sorochi do Letreiro site in Brazil have found numerous ancient petroglyphs carved next to the fossilized footprints of dinosaurs. It appears that the ancient groups who created the rock art intentionally included the footprints in their graphic panels, which are mostly made up of geometric motifs. For a long time, Sorochi do Letreiro has been the subject of paleontological research. Now a paper published in the journal Scientific Reports has detailed the important archaeological features of this site, as well as the relationship they may have with the fossils. The Sorochi do Letrero site, translated as Signpost Hill in the paper, is located on the northwest of the Sousa Basin in Brazil. It's made up of three large rocky outcrops which cover 15,000 square metres. The Sousa Basin is an alluvial fan paleo environment of early Cretaceous age and is mostly made up of sandstone. It's part of the Dinosaur Valley National Monument due to its many ichno fossils dating back to the early Cretaceous period. Paleontological research of Sorochi de Letrero in the 20th century also recorded the presence of petroglyphs, referring to them as Kariri Indian carvings. The site is important for both its paleontological and archaeological features. However, very little research has been carried out on the rock art, and up until recently, no analysis had been done on its relationship to the dinosaur footprints. In other parts of the world, investigations of similar sites have been carried out. In Australia, some petroglyphs were thought to be a human interpretation of dinosaur footprints, and in Poland, it was suggested that the location of a dinosaur footprint had become an occult gathering site. The juxtaposition of dinosaur footprints and petroglyphs is also found in Utah in the United States, at the Poison Spider Dinosaur Tracks at the Parowan Gap and at Zion National Park. However, none of these sites show such a close relationship between the footprints and the rock art. At Sorocha de Letrero, the three rocky outcrops contain the fossilized footprints of theropods, sauropods, and iguanodontian dinosaurs. The rock art is found on subhorizontal and conglomerate sandstone strata. In other parts of northeastern Brazil, petroglyphs are found on similar types of sandstone. The area is located close to a small lake and a temporary stream, something that's commonly found at other petroglyph sites in the region as well. Quite a few surface portions appear to have been displaced due to rainwater runoff. All of the petroglyphs were made by light scraping on the rock surface, but many of them then had a second technique applied where the scraped lines were pecked using a sharp tool to further refine the engraving. These latter carvings were less heavily eroded than the ones that were only scraped. The petroglyphs are mostly geometric forms, but they may have been meant to represent figurative icons. Outcrop 1 is the northernmost of the three. It has the highest concentration of theropod tracks and 22 symbols in addition to those referenced in previous paleontological research. In this photograph, the petroglyphs are circled with dotted lines. Outcrop 2, which is also referred to as the central or middle outcrop, has only two petroglyphs, and these are not well preserved enough to analyse. Outcrop 3 is the southernmost rock and has 30 petroglyphs, which are larger and deeper than those on outcrop 1. Its petroglyphs also show more varied motifs. Pecking marks on all of the outcrops show that there were probably many more petroglyphs originally. No lithic artefacts or other evidence of domestic occupation have been found in the area. Photographs A and B here are of outcrop 1, and photograph C is of outcrop 3. This is an aerial photograph of outcrop 1 alongside a drawing showing the theropod footprints in white and the petroglyphs in dark orange. These photographs are also of outcrop 1, showing tridactyl footprints that belong to theropods. In D and F, these footprints can be seen alongside petroglyphs. Here in photographs A, B, C, E and F, there are examples of internally divided circles, a common motif at outcrop 1. Photograph D shows a rectangle split into eight boxes. Here are some examples of rock art from outcrop 3. 
A shows a circle around internal radiating lines. B is an aerial photograph of part of the site, which shows that quite a bit of it has been damaged. C shows what look like stars, some of which are inside faded circles. Here are more motifs from Outcrop 3. A shows a box divided into four parts. B shows three circles next to one another with a central line running through them. C shows an axis with radiating lines. The authors of the paper mentioned that this resembles a phytoform, a plant basically. D shows a circle enclosing many radiating lines. E shows a rectangle split into four boxes. F shows a serpentine motif with the grooves filled with moss. G shows tridigits. H shows a line crossed by two semicircles. The pecking technique used to carve the petroglyph can clearly be seen in this photograph. I shows a square divided into 16 boxes. And this photograph shows petroglyphs that are near sauropod tracks. The dotted area outlines pecking marks which indicate the presence of petroglyphs. Interestingly, none of the petroglyphs overlap with the dinosaur footprints. Some are, however, extremely close to them. The researchers suggest that this is evidence that the ancient groups who created the rock art wanted to assimilate the fossil record into their graphic displays. An even more interesting relationship between the footprints and the petroglyphs can be seen here. A shows a theropod fossil and C shows a tridigit petroglyph. This does not mean that these groups understood the fossils as having belonged to dinosaurs, but they probably knew that the theropod fossils were faunal footprints of some kind since they resemble those of the largest bird in Brazil, as can be seen in photograph B. However, the sauropod footprints do not match any of those of modern Brazilian fauna. It is possible, though, that a type of mastodon was present in the region at the same time as the petroglyphs were made, and it would have produced similar footprints to the sauropod fossils. Similar geometric motifs have been found at other sites in northeastern Brazil. So it's likely those at Sorocho do Letrero and these others were produced by the same cultural group. This map shows similar sites across three states, with Sorocho do Letrero marked by a star. As an example, here is a drawing of the petroglyphs at the Junco archaeological site. As I mentioned earlier, there are differences in the style of the motifs at Sorocho do Letrero, with outcrop 1 and outcrop 3 varying slightly. The authors of the paper suggest this is due to them having been created by different authors expressing their individual styles within the same social group, rather than indicating that different social groups produced each one. The rock art has been provisionally dated based on its iconography and burials in the region that most likely belong to the people that created the petroglyphs. Human burials date back to between 10,000 and 2,620 years ago. However, further analysis, such as using X-ray fluorescent spectrometry, will help to resolve the dating problem. One of the goals of the paper was to set out suggestions for the preservation of the site from the weather and human and animal activity. Parts of the site are heavily eroded and the flaking of the rock has, in some places, disturbed the iconography as can be seen in these photographs. Although at the beginning of the paper, the fossilized footprints of iguanodontian dinosaurs are mentioned as being at the site, the rest of the paper doesn't refer to them again. So perhaps there are no examples of iguanodontian footprints next to petroglyphs, only theropod and sauropod ones, unless I've missed something. I think it's quite possible that the ancients revered fossils from an aesthetic point of view, and perhaps something a bit deeper. As well as being included in art, there are examples of fossils being included in ancient structures, and also being collected by hunter-gatherers, early farmers, and the megalith builders. Many unworked fossils have been found at ancient sites, which suggests they were simply collected rather than used for any particular purpose. The motifs themselves are also very interesting. We can only speculate as to what they meant. I see solar symbolism, but who knows? That's it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, why are you still here? Do not hit the dislike button. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. I am planning some new things for you all, so bear with me on that, and I'll see you next time.